In today's video, I'm gonna share with you guys six different tips that you can use in order to grow your channel from zero to your first 100 subscribers and beyond. And spoiler alert, with one of these tips, you might be able to get your first 100 subscribers within the first 24 hours of creating your channel. All right, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Irvin Pena, also known as Irv Official. And if you stumbled upon this video, then it's probably because one of three reasons. You either just started your YouTube channel, you're trying to figure this thing out, or you are trying to get to your first 100 subscribers, or you are already well past your first 100 subscribers, but you're trying to find new creative ways to attract more subscribers to your channel. Now really quickly before jumping into the first tip, I wanna share something with you guys. When I first started my YouTube channel, I thought that it was a big myth that I would hear from other channels when they would say things like, you know, the hardest 100 subscribers are the hardest ones to get once you get that, it kind of starts to snowball, and then once you get over a thousand, the floodgates open. And I said, that can't be true. That can't be true. Well, lo and behold, now that I'm at, I think, right around 82, maybe 83,000 at the time of this recording, that actually proved to be correct. You see, once you get your first 100 subscribers, for whatever reason, I'm not sure if the algorithm starts to push your uh, videos to more people, or if maybe you just start to have a better delivery, or if you just start to maybe attract your type of audience or community, you actually do start to add on more subscribers a bit more quickly once you get over that 100 subscriber bump. All right, so the way that we've organized this list and the way that we are going to be going through it in this video, it's the least effective way to gain subscribers all the way to the most effective way to gain subscribers. And when I say the most effective way, I'm rating it off of the, uh, the strategy or the tactic that will gain you the most amount of subscribers. So the first tip that I have for you guys is engage with with other communities and engage with other channels. Now, I'm not talking about just going over there and leaving a, hey, go check out my video and then dropping your link because no one likes to get their videos spammed on. And the odds of someone actually seeing that comment and feeling that it's actually genuine, it's very far and few in between. So what I would recommend for you to do is head over to someone else's channel, possibly along your niche. So if you do makeup, if you do some type of gardening, if you maybe are into parenting and you are into child development, just to kind of give you guys some ideas, head over to other channels. I would prefer maybe some smaller channels. So maybe you can do three big channels and two small channels. And the reason for that is because you wanna have a nice blend and you just don't wanna get lost in the comments. Speaking of the comments, when you are in the comments section, you will go ahead and leave your own comments while you're there. Actually watch the video. That's one thing that I can't stress enough. Actually watch the video and if you think that just because some of these creators have millions of followers or millions of subscribers, they don't actually read their comments, believe me, they do. And they actually appreciate it when you watch their content and if they actually write back to you and their subscribers see that they're, uh, that they're communicating with you and that, that there's contact going back and forth, then that actually increases the probability of somebody coming over to your channel. And again, it's already within the niche. So the second strategy that we have on the list here is joining Facebook groups. Now I know what you're thinking and the answer to that is no. I will never recommend for you to join an engagement group and the reason for that is because that's dead in terms of actual engagement. I don't even know why they call it engagement groups when if you've ever seen an engagement group, it's pretty much if you follow me, I follow you, you see it in the comments, follow for follow. The reason why that actually ends up hurting you in the long run is because there's act, there's no engagement, they don't ever come back to like your video, they don't ever come back to give you a meaningful comment, and they don't actually sit there and actually watch your video. You see, what I'm recommending is for you to check out two different groups. Now, the first group that you wanna check out is Facebook groups that are created for and by other creators. So. Those groups that you will be a part of, they help people just like yourself and just like myself to either get video ideas, to maybe help each other out if a thumbnail is catchy, to maybe help you with your keywords, maybe help you with your SEO search, possibly help you out with new video ideas, and the list goes on and on. And then we can all share different stories of what's worked for us that can possibly work for them and vice versa. Maybe some battle wounds that we have of a video that we thought was going to hit and it was just a complete bomb and I actually ended up failing in terms of views. So that's the first group that I would recommend. The second group that I would recommend is also in Facebook, but this is more geared toward your actual niche. Let me explain. Let's say for example, I am a part of a gardening group and my channel happens to be about gardening. 
but in that gardening group you'll have people talking about different hoses that they use types of water types of plants maybe maybe the hours of sunlight that they use for certain tomatoes that they're growing and i know that i am making videos specific to that then why wouldn't I say, hey guys, I made a video, check it out, this is exactly what I did to grow my garden from where it was a few months back to where it is today. As long as you're providing value, I don't see why that would actually be spamming the community that you're a part of. So go check those two groups out and that will ultimately end up adding to more subscribers. And again, this is right within your niche. You know, this third one I thought that most people would have in play, but they actually don't. And that's actually having your channel completely filled out here's what i mean have a clear picture that kind of depicts of what your channel's about as your profile picture when they head over to the description do you have your links for your social media on there do you have your links for your website do you sell merchandise can they find that when they go to the channel to the channel art can they see the banner that says maybe the times of day that you post or the or what days during the week you're actually on do you have certain days that you go live on Monday, are you posting vlogs? On Wednesdays, are you posting tutorials? So on and so forth. And so I've gone through so many different channels where it looks like they have pretty good content and you can kind of see their intentions, but when you actually go through the channel, it seems like it's almost like a ghost town as far as, as funny as that sounds. And so that's one thing that you really want to nail early on because when you are creating content, you begin to realize that a lot of the subscribers that you get are watching you not only for the first time, but you also have returning guests that they wanna stay up to date with maybe if there's any changes in times that you are posting apart from your schedule. And so one way that they can do that is that they can simply just go on your channel art and see and just check out your gallery, which is another thing that you wanna do. Make sure that you have your playlist completely set up. So if you have, let's say, a playlist about real estate investing and then you have another playlist about personal finance and then you have another playlist, let's say, about personal vlogs. You wanna make sure that you separate that because that also attracts different audiences and it lets YouTube know more so what your channel's about and what traffic to drive into it. So with the fourth tip is finally one that we should really be paying close attention to because now we're starting to really open up the flood floodgates for how many people we're actually able to attract into our channel. And this is when we actually start to reach out to the masses and when our videos really start getting pushed out. And what I mean by that is, are you creating searchable content? Are your videos searchable? The titles of the video, are they catchy? Are they actual terms that people are typing into their desktops, into their phones, into their laptops, and actually looking for right now in 2020 or 2021, whenever you're watching this? And we're all familiar with keywords, but we also want to focus on something called long tail keywords. Here's the difference. Let's say that I am making a video about money. That's a little bit too broad, a little bit too generic. I'm gonna get lost between news stations, bigger channels, and the whole nine yard. And the odds of myself, especially with less than 100 subscribers, actually getting found by an audience is slim to none. So there's really no point of even making that video. Now let's get a little bit more specific. Let's say that we now have money habits. While that's a little better, and now we're actually starting to reduce the amount of competition that we actually have, this is still known as a keyword phrase. And remember, we're looking for long tail keywords. Now, while that keyword phrase is pretty good, it's exactly what it is, it's a phrase. And so let's narrow that down to an actual long tail keyword, which would sound something like this if we're making a video. Money habits that help you save more. You see how now that gives it a little bit of more searchability when it comes to the actual search engine of YouTube and what people are looking for. Now, a good tool that I highly recommend for us to use, which I use myself, is TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy not only lets you find trending topics that you possibly could be making videos for that are within your niche, but they also give you an actual ranking and a score for certain keywords and certain phrases and certain long tail uh, SEO words that you're going after and it gives you from a scale from zero, zero being the weakest, a hundred being the strongest, where your channel would actually rank for that phrase and for that actual long tail keyword. So I've gone ahead and put the link down in the description where you guys can go ahead and check it out for yourself. They give you a 14 day free trial if you decide that, hey look, this is actually helping me out, then at that point you can decide to upgrade to the paid version. So the fifth tip that I have for us here is thumbnail and CTR, also known as click-through rate. Let's go ahead and separate them first. Let's go ahead and focus on the thumbnail first. 
Because what's the point of you having valuable content, a good title that's actually searchable, but then your thumbnail is just completely off the wall, doesn't make sense, maybe the colors are off, maybe the picture that you picked is a little blurry, maybe it doesn't actually attract someone who wants to click on it. One thing that I always say is that when you have a good thumbnail, it kind of stops someone in their tracks, and then from there, their eyes head over to the actual title. That's usually how I've been able to see it, even for myself whenever I'm searching. If the thumbnail's good, it kind of stops me in my track as I'm scrolling, and then my eyes glance over at the title to see if it's something that I want to click on. Now, when it comes to the thumbnail, it's important because when you are on a browse page, and if you're not aware of what a browse page is, this is where the majority of your traffic is going to come when your channel begins to explode. For example, this is what mine looks like. A lot of it comes from suggested and the browse. And the reason for that is because when you end up on someone's browse page, it looks something like this. Now, when they are deciding at this point, am I gonna click on this? Am I not gonna click on this? Is it relevant to what I've been searching? The way that YouTube sets it up is someone if someone has been searching for that content previously, then they're going to give your video a shot. And now let's go ahead and roll in CTR also known as click-through rate. CTR, simply put, is it, let's say they have your thumbnail and someone else's thumbnail. They decide to click on yours. You go ahead and get a thumbs up by YouTube and they continue to promote your video. Let's say within the first hour. So this is why it's so crucial to really hit it off with the hook at the beginning of the video. Have a good thumbnail, have a good title. Everything needs to be perfect. And you'll get better with this along the way as you create more videos. Let's say that they push your video out, two videos drop at the same time, let's say at 6 p.m. Both videos are about the same thing. We have A and we have B. Let's say that they decide to push yours out first. They now push it to the next category. Now instead of showing it to 100 people, which is 100 impressions, they'll now show it to let's say 500. Once it gets to 500 and it continues to outperform the other two or three thumbnails that they stand it up against, then they'll promote it to another thousand. Once it hits 1,000, they'll promote it to 5,000, so on and so forth, and that's why you'll see some videos take off within the first 24 hours, and then you'll see other videos within the first hour where it's just like, yeah, why did I even make this video to begin with? And the sixth and final tip that I have for us for gaining 100 subscribers and beyond, and with this one, you might be able to add 100 subscribers within the first 24 hours of you even opening up your YouTube channel, and that's simply, well, sharing it to your socials. That's right. I can't tell you how many subscribers I've gained from just putting up a post on my Facebook as a status. It doesn't have to be a like page. It can literally be, if not, it's better if it's your actual personal Facebook because now you have friends supporting you, you have relatives, you have your parents if you want them subscribing to your channel. But on top of that, you also have Instagram, you have TikTok, you have Twitch. You can literally put the link in bio of anything that you do and you let them know hey guys i just created a new youtube channel or i just created a new video go check it out it means a lot to me if you guys subscribe it's literally that simple guys i can't tell you how many of my friends are subscribed to my channel that are probably watching my content right now that were some of my first subscribers until this day i know exactly who number one was who number 27 was, who number 84 was, because again, some of them were some of my closest friends that decided to support my channel. And there you guys have it. I hope that you guys are able to take these tips and scale and really explode your YouTube channel to awesome growth. Let me know down in the comments which of these tips or strategies you actually plan on using or if you've used any of them in the past. If you guys found any value in this content today, I'd appreciate it if you guys hit me with a thumbs up down below, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and join the official community and tap that notification bell so you can get notified every time we have YouTube tips like this coming out each and every single week. Once again, my name is Irvin Pena, also known as Herb Official. Until next time, everyone, we'll see ya.